Next, we are talking about loop statements. So if you have a statement and you want to repeat it for n number of times, you can use loop statements. We have multiple types of loop statements and we are starting with for loop. So let's say you want to write something to cell a1. So you can use cells 1 comma 1 dot value equals 1. Similarly, if you want to have values in a1 to a5 or a6, you can repeat this statement over and again and your code would look like this. Now we can make use of for loop and we can eliminate the number of rows that we have written or the number of statements that we have written in the code and we can have just one statement. So for i equals 1 to 5 and it ends with next that is the syntax of for loop and we can parameterize the values that we have used for row number and value and you can see if I delete the values and if I run the code it would be generating the same output. Right, so we have eliminated n number of rows from our code and just with one for and one next statement we were able to repeat it. Now if I want to run it for 50 rows I just need to change the end value. So in this for loop i is a counter and 1 is the starting value 50 is the ending value. So it started with 1 and it ends at 50 and here in the statement we have parameterized the row number and the value that's why we were getting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So now let's say we make step size equals 2 and let's run it to see the output. So you can see that it has written 1 and then 3 and then 5. What happens is when we run the code it writes in cell 1 comma 1 and writes 1 as a value then it writes in 3 comma 1 because the counter was incremented by 2. So from 1 it became 3. So 3 comma 1 dot value became 3 and so on and so forth it moved forward. Now we can also change the step size and we can make it negative but for that we need to make the starting point bigger and the ending point smaller so that our loop do not get stuck in an infinite loop. So we say that we want to start from 10 and we want to move to 1 and step size is minus 1. So it will be exiting out of the loop when the value becomes less than 1. Now let's say using for loops we want to write 1 to range a1 to a6 sorry e6 right so what we can do we can either use a simple range function to write a static value but we'll be using for loop just to understand the concept right so we know that uh, we are writing to all the six rows so there would be a counter which would be incrementing the rows so for that i have a one loop so for r equals one to six that is for row numbers so row numbers increases from one to six this is what i'm saying and for every row i want to write for all five columns so therefore inside this for loop i say that for c equals one to five now what do i want to do with that row and that column number i want to write to that cells r comma c dot value and i want to write the value which is static i keep it as one i delete this entire content and let's run this code and it would be writing the same thing for me using multiple for loops now I can change these values and let's say if I make it 2 so all values become 2. If I change it to R so you can see that for every row first row all the values are 1 for second row all the values are 2. So this way we can control these three parameters row number column number and the value and we can parameterize it according to the row and column that we have used as counter variables of the loops. Now let's say we want to write something like this for first row I want to just write 1 as value for second row I want to write two numbers 1 and 2 right so I know that again I would be using same structure so for row starting from 1 to 5 because I have 5 rows now column numbers are actually starting from 1 in all cases because I am writing from first column but the ending point is not same for all the rows so for first row my column number starts from 1 ends at 1 second row starts at 1 ends at 2 right so what I need to do is I need to build a logic to control row number column number and their values as well so I write down a small table here just to explain the concept so for first row and first column the value is 1 so this I am just converting the data in the tabular format so 1 comma 1 dot value becomes 1 now for second row 2 comma 1 and then 2 comma 2 so for 2 comma 1 the value is 1 2 comma 2 the value is 2 similarly for third row 3 comma 1 value is 1, 3 comma 2 the value is 2, 3 comma 3 the value is 3 and so on and so forth. Now you can have a look at the table and try to build the logic and see how you can get the value in terms of rows and columns. So 
So you can see here value has no relation with, with row number but it has direct relation with column number. So value is exactly equal to column in all the cases. The only thing that we need to change here is the ending point for the column number which is equal to R, right? So for first row it has one column. For second row starts from one ends at two, right? For third row starts at one ends at three. So it is exactly equal to the row, row number till which we want to stop. Right, so therefore in the second loop, the inner loop, I am changing it from 1 to R. So if we run this piece of code now, it would be generating the same output as we were talking about. Now let us change it to 10 and run it again. So we see the same pattern till 10 rows. Okay, and we can change it to any number and we can get the desired output. Now let us talk about another loop statement which is for each loop. And for that what I am doing is I am creating an array of five numbers. So a equals array and then I'm giving the numbers one, two, three, four, five. Now let's say I don't know the number of elements that we have in this array. So what I can do is if we don't know the number or the counter variable till which we want to iterate, we can use for each i in this array. So what it will do is it will automatically iterate through each and every value of this array. So tomorrow if you increase the size of array, you need not do any changes in the code. Same logic we use generally in the navigation for sheets as well. So let's say I want to extract something from all the sheets of the workbook. So I use for each loop. For example, for each sh in active workbook dot sheets. Here sh is actually a sheet object. So one by one sheet would be assigned in this object and then we can perform operation on that particular sheet. We can also use the same thing for accessing different cells as well. So for each sh or any variable in range for example a1 to b2 whatever let us now talk about while loop and to explain the while loop what i'm doing is first of all i write a very simple for loop where i'm printing 10 numbers from cell a1 to a10 so for i equals 1 to 10 cell i comma 1 dot value equals i this is how i can build this logic using for loop now i want to develop the same logic using while loop so here in the for loop we can see the condition was that the number should be less than equal to 10. So that is what I put as a condition here in the while loop. So while i less than equal to 10 and it ends with w end. Whatever statement was inside the for loop I keep it as it is. And the initialization here happens in the first line for for loop. But here we don't have any initialization. So we need to do it outside the loop. One more thing is left here that for for loop it automatically increments the value or the counter variable by one by default but here it doesn't do anything so we need to increment this value in the code itself so i equals i plus one i write this in the third column and you can see the same output is generated using while loop as well there is another flavor of while loop which is do while okay so the syntax is like this do while and then the condition and then we have a body and it ends with loop it doesn't end with w end okay so again we can give the condition here in brackets after do while and then we can give the statement inside it require initialization before the loop and we also need to increment like we do in while loop as well the difference between do while and while loop comes here that while checks the condition first and then only it enters inside the loop but in case of do while we can put condition here in the beginning as well as we can check the condition in the end as well so what will happen if we put that condition in the end after the loop keyword so it would be first executing the do block and only then it would be checking the condition so at least one time it would be executing that block and only then if condition passes it will continue if the condition fails it won't continue so that is the difference and similarly we also have another loop which is do until this also has two flavors. We can give the condition here along with do and we can also give the condition after the loop. Now the difference is that do while keep on executing the statement inside it till the condition is true. And for do until whenever the first condition passes, it will exit out of that loop. So it will continue executing the loop till the condition is failing. Now in this example, till the time user enters a number less than 100, it will keep on showing this input box and whenever user enters a number greater than 100 this will go away so that means it will stay inside the loop till the condition is failing and whenever it passes for the first time it will just move out of the loop 
so that is all about loop if you have any questions or if you have any doubt remaining in the loop statements you can revisit to my complete course which is freely available on my youtube channel and you can go through more examples about loop statements